All right. Uh, start out with uh, one of the lengthiest problems we'll ever do. Then the rest of them are much, are considerably shorter than this first one, but it, there's a lot to it. So A, we're going to find the interval of convergence of the series. For what values of x does the series converge absolutely and conditionally, then C conditionally. Absolute means, first of all, to be absolute, to, to decide absolute or conditional, it has to alternate. Without alternating, you don't have these positives and negatives to work with to make it converge to any value you want. And that's the conditional convergence. You can rearrange them and make the series converge to any value you want. Now, if it's absolutely convergent, it doesn't matter if you rearrange them or not. It's going to converge to the same value. So it has to really be alternating to really consider B and C, kind of. And we have two tests where absolute value is involved. For geometric series, if your absolute value of R is less than 1, then this converges by geometric series. And the other is the ratio test. Ratio test has absolute value in it as well. So that's the one, we're going to do one of those two things on these series. Now this is not geometric, not even close, so we're going to do the ratio test. That's how we're going to start. So we do the limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value of n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n plus 1, and then n plus 1 squared plus 1. So every n now has an n plus 1. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. In other words, we're going to divide by the nth term, or multiply by 4 to the n, n squared plus 1, over n x to the n. So there's the absolute value. So there's the ratio test set up. Now we're going to look at anything extra that we have. Limit as n approaches infinity of, we have n plus 1 times n squared plus 1. That'll be n to the third if we were to multiply it all out. In the denominator, we have n times n plus 1 squared plus 1, and that would be n to the third also if we multiplied everything out. What do we have? We have an extra 4 in the denominator. And we have an extra x in the numerator. So we have just x up here. There we go. Now if we do the limit on n to the third over n to the third, that's 1. We end up with the absolute value of x over 4 is less than 1. So negative 1 less than x over 4 less than 1. Now if we multiply by 4, we get negative 4 less than x less than 4. So now we've already determined some of the absolute convergence because the ratio test has absolute value in it. So between negative 4 and 4, we've uh, established absolute convergence in between there. But now we have to decide what's happening at negative 4 and what's happening <clears throat> at 4. So what we do is we take negative 4 and we plug it back in and we create this brand new problem. So off to the side, we're going to say that we're going to plug in negative 4. We're going to test the endpoints. So let's see what we get n equals 1 to infinity of n times negative 4 to the n over 4 to the n, n squared plus 1. Keep in mind this is one of the longest problems we'll do. There's a lot to do on this problem. The rest of them aren't quite as long as this one. Well, if I just look at the negative 4 over 4, we could write this as negative 4 over 4 to the n because they're both to the n. Now, if they were raised to something different, we wouldn't be able to do that. But negative 4 over 4 is negative 1. So this now is an alternating series. It's negative 1 to the n times n over n squared plus 1 when we plug negative 4 in for x. So now we have this brand new problem. And we need, since it's alternating, we need to test for absolute convergence and then conditional convergence. So to test for absolute convergence, we're going to take the absolute value of this. So we're going to write kind of this new one again. So another new one is just n over n squared plus 1. It's the absolute value. Now we have to decide whether that converges or not. So what test do you think we should use? Was the break kind to you or not? <laughs> so what do you think? 
What do you think? In a row, we could, but I don't want to. We could. There is, yeah, limit comparison test is probably a little easier, but we certainly could do integral test. Yes. So limit comparison test, we're going to compare this to 1 over n, or n over n squared. So 1 over n, this diverges by uh, um, harmonic series. Couldn't think of it for a second. So now these either diverge together or converge together, and I hate to ruin the suspense, but they're going to diverge together. Uh, now we do the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared plus 1 divided by what we're comparing it to, but we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Well, now it's n squared over n squared. This is equal to 1. So what? Now why do we care that that's 1? It is positive and finite. Positive and finite. Which is positive and finite. So this diverges by limit comparison test. So what we found out is that this diverges, it does not converge absolutely is what we found out. Now this is why this problem is so lengthy. Now we have to go all the way back to the original. Now, okay, we diverge by limit comparison test. All right, now we're going to go back to the original and decide if it converges conditionally. So how are we going to test this original one right here? What do you think? Yeah, it's an alternating series. We're going to use the alternating series test. So now coming back up to this one, limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared plus 1 is equal to 0. It has to pass the nth term test. It does. Now we have to be able to say that n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1 is less than n over n squared plus 1. But if we have variables on the top and the bottom, we can't be comfortable with that. We have to say f of x is equal to x over x squared plus 1. f prime of x is bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Oh, it lagged that hard. <clears throat> well, 1x squared minus 2x squared is negative 1x squared. We have to decide when this becomes negative. So 1 minus x squared has to be less than 0. Negative x squared is less than negative 1. x squared is greater than 1. Divide by negative 1. So x has to be greater than 1. If it's equal to 1, it's actually 0. So now I can go back up here and say that this is true for all n greater than or equal to 2. Or you could just put greater than 1. But usually we start where it starts. It starts at 2. We found out it. It has to be bigger than 1. All right, well, we can make this statement. Converges, converges conditionally by alternating series test. And because we had to go through all of that, this makes this a, quite a, a lengthy problem. But we've only tested negative 4. 4 goes a little quicker. We've got to test the other side now. That was just one side. Now we're going to go to 4. And we create this brand new problem. The brand new problem, it's a little easier because 4 to the n over the 4 to the n, that's 1, not negative 1. So that just cancels out, 4 to the n over 4 to the n. So now we just have n over n squared plus 1, n equals 1 to infinity. Now here's why this one is a little shorter. Again, we've already done this. We did this over here. You don't need to redo, you don't need to reinvent this wheel that we just created. So we did it right there. We found out it diverges by the limit comparison test. So diverges by 
limit comparison test. And again, I want to make this clear. I can skip all those steps because I already did them. If I hadn't done them before, I'd have to go through all that. All right, well, converges here, converges here, check, diverges there, no good. So we're going to finally answer the questions A, B, and C. The question A is, or the exercise, find the interval of convergence of the series. We found out that it converges from negative 4 to 4. And it doesn't say conditional. It doesn't say absolute. If it converges, it converges for part A. Letter B, I believe, it says uh, absolute convergence. Well, it converged absolutely from negative 4 to 4. That was part of the ratio test at the very beginning. It converges absolutely in between these because ratio test has absolute value in it. Letter C, where does it converge conditionally? Only at negative 4. So literally at that value. Nowhere else. Woo! Yeah. That's a good one. That's a lot of work. Questions? You do the interval. You test absolute and conditional on the left side. You can test absolute and conditional on the right side. Sometimes that's a lot of work. Sometimes it's not. This one is not. What do you notice about this one, number 36? Anything? It's geometric. So this one's going to take a lot less work. Here we go. We're going to say that a sub 1 is 1, because we're plugged 0 in to get 1. r is x plus 5. So now the absolute value of r, which is x plus 5, needs to be less than 1. Negative 1 less than x plus 5 less than 1. Negative 6 less than x less than negative 4. A, absolute convergence. Negative 6 to negative 4. B, uh, no, that's convergence. Absolute convergence, negative 6 to negative 4. Conditional convergence, none. That, that always happens with geometric series. They will never work at the endpoints. Never. Ever. Will it work? Almost geometric, right? Take away the n, it's geometric. Put the n in, not geometric anymore. So the only other choice for this is the ratio test. Limit n approaches infinity, absolute value of 3x minus 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n over 3x minus 2 to the n. Well, the limit on the ends goes to 1, and there's only one extra 3x minus 2 going on up here. So negative 1 less than 3x minus 2 less than 1. Add 2, which is 1. That's 3. So 1 third is less than x is less than 1. So I'll tell you that 1 third is going to, make, is going to give us the negative 1, and 1 is probably going to give us the positive 1. When we plug one third back in, three times a third is one. One minus two, that gives us the negative one. All right, so let's test our endpoints. X equals one third. Like I said, a third of three is one. So one minus two is negative one to the n over n. And that's actually good news. That's the alternating harmonic series. So if I took the absolute value of this, it would be the harmonic series and it would diverge. So it does not converge absolutely. But if we did the alternating series test on this, it does converge. So this converges conditionally by alternating harmonic series. Nope, that's done. How about the other side? X equals 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, so that gives us the positive 1. 1 to the n I don't write, because 1 to the n is always 1. 
So this just becomes 1 over n. This diverges. I'll get out of the way here in a second. Diverges by harmonic series. I didn't have to consider absolute convergence because this doesn't alternate. So taking the absolute value is the same as the series itself. So the only time we really even consider absolute or conditional is when we have an alternating series. Otherwise, it's just all, it's either absolutely convergent or diverges. So A, B, and C. Convergence. Oh, it converged at one third. So one third to one. Don't include one. It diverges there. Absolute convergence. Well, one third was only conditional. So one third to one. And then any conditional convergence? Yeah, exactly at one third. That's the only place where that happens. Otherwise, we used absolute value for everything else. Everybody good? What else we got? I tried to pick every possible scenario that we could go through. So here's, uh, here's another scenario. That's not the last one. Is that the last one? Oh, no. We got two more. All right. Two more cases where I thought my, are kind of unique. Not geometric. So we're going to do ratio test. Limit n approaches infinity. Absolute value of 4x minus 5 to the, well, if we plug n plus 1 in here, we get 2n plus 2, so we get 2n plus 3. So 2n plus 3 is what the, the final result when we plug in n plus 1. Over n plus 1 to the 3 halves times n to the 3 halves over 4x minus 5 to the just 2n plus 1. I thought, well, what if we have to deal with these squared terms? I kind of uh, we've covered it, but I wanted to remind you because we have. Um, let's do this. The end of the three halves over end of the three halves. That's just one, and we have two extra four x minus fives. So we write four x minus five squared has to be less than one. That's part of the ratio test. And you might think, well, where'd the absolute value go? Well, if you square something, you don't need it. You can still have it. You just don't need it. But now, when we take the square root, the square root of something squared is technically the absolute value of 4x minus 5. So it kind of it comes back into play. So whenever I see something squared, I kind of, I kind of ignore it. You're, you get to the same spot anyway. Uh, so negative 1 less than 4x minus 5 less than 1. 6 less than 4x less than, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, that'd be 4, wouldn't it? Add 5. I'm adding 5. 4 less than 4x less than 6. So 1 is less than x is less than 3 halves. So one of those should give us the 1. The other one should give us the negative 1. And we got to see how that's going to happen. So let's test 1. That becomes n equals 1 to infinity of 4 minus 5, so negative 1. Negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 over n to the 3 halves. Now that gives the appearance that it's alternating because we have that negative 1. But 2n plus 1 is always odd. So if you plug in 1, you get 3. You plug in 2, you get 5. You plug in 3, you get 7. So it's not alternating, it's just always negative 1. Since it's always negative 1, we can write it like this. It's always negative 1. Not only that, I can pull it out front. I can pull the negative out here. We can take constants out of pretty much everything. So now p is equal to 3 halves, which is greater than 1. Uh, converges absolutely by p-series. 
because even if I would do the exact same thing if I took the absolute value of it, having that negative out there does not change the fact that it converges absolutely. Well, I mean, take it off and it does converge absolutely. All right, there's the one. Now we need the three halves. Half of four is two. Two times three, because we're plugging in three halves. Two times three is six. Six minus five is one. And when it's one to something, I don't even put that. Except for the number one in this case, because it's the numerator. Uh, one to infinity of one over n to the three halves. So p is equal to three halves is greater than one. Converges absolutely. by P series. So we have A, B, and C. A, B, and C. And it converges at both of these. So where does it converge? From one to three halves. Where does it converge absolutely? One to three halves. And where does it converge conditionally? None. It didn't converge conditionally. It converges absolutely everywhere on its domain, on its interval. So I thought that was a little unique, I guess, where it converges absolutely everywhere. Last one I thought had some issues as well. So let's take a look at those. Not geometric. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's not even close to being geometric, but it's pretty close. Take that away and it's geometric. Even with the negative, your R just would be negative. But throw that N in there, it's not uh, geometric anymore. So here we go. Limit N approaches infinity. Because I'm taking the absolute value of this, I don't mess with the negative one. Absolute value of 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. x minus 1 to the n plus 1. All right. Times n over 2 to the n, x minus 1 to the n. Limit n approaches infinity. Maybe we do the n's first. <clears throat> <coughs> an extra 2 on top and an extra x minus 1 on top. There we go. So we get 1 over 1. Absolute value of 2 times x minus 1. Less than 1. Negative 1. Less than 2. x minus 1. Less than 1. Negative one half less than x minus one less than one half. Add one. So a half less than x less than three halves. Two, you know, adding two halves. So you get three halves. Now before, of course, we would stop there. We're like, oh, that's good. There's your interval of convergence, but we have more now. So every time you're asked to find an interval of convergence, you need to check the endpoints. So let's see what happens when we plug a half in. Equals one half. Here's what we get. N equals one to infinity of negative one to the N plus one. We have two to the N over N and then times, when you take one half minus one, you get, let's call it negative one half to the N. But I can, write, I can write this as 1 to the n over negative 2 to the n. Just this 1 half, just this negative 1 half part. But I don't really write 1 to the n. So this is 1 over negative 2 to the n. So really, instead of this, I could put it over negative 2 to the n. Do you guys follow that line of thought there? So now we get negative 1 to the n over n. Right? Those 2 over negative 2, that's negative 1. 
So now we either have the alternating harmonic series or we have the harmonic series, one or the other. It either alternates or it doesn't. But when we have the same bases, don't we add the powers, right? And n plus n is 2n. So the next step for this one I would do is negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 over n. Well, now the question is, does this alternate or not? It does not. The power is always odd. So I can finally write this as negative n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So it's actually the harmonic series. It just happens to have a negative out front, which doesn't really change anything. So this diverges by harmonic series. So I thought getting a fraction in here was a little different, and I wanted to show you how we're going to deal with that. So we got the left side. How about three halves? I know we have negative 1 to the n plus 1. n plus 1. We got 2 to the n. But three halves, three halves minus two halves is one half. So that one half, one half to the n, I'll just put 2 to the n in the denominator. So that's 2 to the n. And I have this n in the denominator right there. So this one's a little less complicated in that these just cancel out. Well, that is actually alternating now. So this converges conditionally by alternating harmonic series. So A, a B, and a C. So wait, what do we have? What about one half? That diverged. Nope. And then three halves converges. I just know it's conditionally. So where does it converge? Uh, from one half to three halves. One half to three halves. Uh, where does it converge? Absolutely. One half to three halves. Not included there. Where does it converge conditionally? Exactly at three halves. Questions? Questions?